Yes, so Stella, um, I saw the post about her, and so Stella was dumped on the side of the road, we believe, um, because she stayed in the same place. She stayed in the same place for about five days. There was um, someone who had spotted her and seen her and had passed her on her way to work and on her way home from work and Sweet Stella had stayed in the same spot day after day without moving, which is usually a sign that they have been dumped and they're waiting on their owner to come back and get them. And so finally, the, um, the Good Samaritan picked her up and got in touch with the rescue that we work with. And, um, and then she put the call out for help. Could anyone foster her that she was full and would not be able to help Stella at all unless someone stepped up and took her in. So we have had her now for two or three weeks. Yeah. She was spayed. Um, she was spayed the day that we got her. She had surgery that morning and we got her that afternoon. And so, yeah, she is available and good to go. She is super sweet and loving. As a matter of fact, when I picked her up from the person that had picked her up from the vet's office, she got straight in the car and just laid her head on my shoulder. She was, it was, it was a thank you. She was super grateful that someone had rescued her and was ready to show her some love, even if it's just temporary. Okay. So the reason, I guess, that we decided to foster was that we, of course, had Willow, and Willow was kind of lonely. I'm not sure she wanted a friend, needed a friend, kind of fighting puppy fever, and decided that um, we wanted to help and do something. We had talked about it for a while and decided that um, maybe that would help us get over the puppy fever. So we took a chance and and what? Yeah, so the first foster was, uh, was a big one. We had six puppies. There were five in one litter and then a friend that came with the deal because he was alone and by himself with a rescuer and um, so we had the choice of getting just four puppies and she was going to keep one to keep with the extra or we could just have all six and so the extra was a hairless baby and so our girl said bring on the naked baby so here we are. We he was a hairless uh, chihuahua and um, Chinese crested mix named Corbin. We had him for a couple of weeks and then he got sent to his forever home in Pennsylvania and that left the five, um, we named them after city, states, U.S. states and so we had them for uh, another four or five weeks after they were old enough to get spayed, neutered and healed and then they each got adopted. Most of them sent up north, one of them um, was adopted here locally in Little Rock. Yeah, most of the rescues that, that come in and the adoptions that happen do go up to the northern states. It is actually hard for people to, um, the supply is hard doing? up there to, to get a hold of. So a lot of the southern states and southern rescues based in the southern states transport up to the northern states because the, the, the need, even though there's not a need for a dog, some people argue there's a need for a dog because of what they bring to our lives. but. Um, the, the supply, there's just not many dogs available up in the northern states, so it's um, very popular for them to rescue from the lower states. Now, because of the lower the southern states, there is a crazy overpopulation problem in the southern states because many people do not have their dogs spayed, neutered, and like here in Arkansas, there is a leech law but it's not really enforced. And that's really just in the city, in the county, on the county roads and stuff is where you really find the, uh, the overpopulation, the overcrowding to, to where it's a it, it's a danger. And the dogs and cats, too, all of the, the pets are just um, repopulating and reproducing and not able to, no one's really caring for them or people want puppies and then they they get to start chewing and barking and doing all the puppy things and then they just dump them on the side of the road or dump them at the local humane society. So it's sad, but um, so we are just kind of um, the pipeline, puppy pipeline for the northern states. I learned, what I learned, I did not realize just in general the need for rescue and fosters everywhere. It's really opened my eyes following Kelly's page through Adopt a Stray Rescue has really opened my eyes to the overcrowding. I mean, I knew that there was a problem, but I didn't realize it was as bad 
as it was, as she goes live sometimes and documents some of these rescues where they're just the living conditions of some of these animals. It's definitely like the ASPCA um, in the arms of the angels, yeah, video for sure, yeah. So the advice is just do it. Um, you know, if, if you're thinking about it and your heart's being tugged, then um, that means you've got room in your heart to, to be filled by one of these pups. And so far they have all been, especially with the older ones, the little pups, you really didn't, they weren't as grateful and thankful because they really had not lived a hard life yet. They have, the pups that we had so far were just, you know, almost straight from the womb and not, but um, like Stella probably lived a pretty hard life before we picked her up. And so lots of hugs and lots of cuddles and that's just super, super rewarding. So definitely jump off into it. If, if, you're, if you're thinking about it, my advice is, is go for it. And so there's lots of risk, lots of groups that need rescue local um, humane societies or animal control, maybe not necessarily humane societies, but animal control shelters do. Um, I know locally here in Sling County, the Bryant Animal Control will sometimes put out a call for fosters. Of course, there's Adopt a Stray Rescue. Just about any um, rescue organization in any state can only do what they do if they have foster families willing to help them because one person can only have so many animals in their house and they need people to help to help and like i said all of the costs are are covered they come and do the for us we don't really have to take them anywhere kelly um, has a vet tech um, history and so she's able to come get all of the medicine and the shots and everything do the microchipping and um, she does take them to the vet if they're um, for the spay and neutering but all of that it doesn't cost us anything all we're really required to do is just love on them and give them the same.